All right, so what, what's going on, guys? And welcome today to our Oracle SQL class. And um, today we are going to be looking at something called restricting and filtering data. So restricting or filtering data and filtering data. So basically, um, what does it mean to restrict and filter data? First of all, to restrict and filter data simply means to retrieve just specific required rules in a table. To retrieve only required rules in a table, usually based on an arbitrary condition or a logical condition. So that means we'll be specifying a logic data must meet before it is retrieved. Now, this is useful because it is, it is not, let's say you have a, a table of 1,000 rules. It's not every time you want to see all the 1,000 staff or 1,000 products or 1,000 clients, depending on the data the table is holding. So filtering has to do with um, restricting the rules that are retrieved. This is done in SQL using the where clause. Is done using the where clause. Before we go and look into the various comparison operators for doing this, let's take a simple example where we want to filter out only those who earn more than 10,000 from our SQL database. So here we have an employee's database. Okay, the employee did their first name, last name, email, phone number, their hired their job ID, salaries, the commission they earn, the manager ID, and their department ID. Now, this is everybody's record, right? I think I have 100 and, um, 206. Okay, I have a couple of employees here, whatever the number. Um, and I want to just filter out only these employees that earn more than $10,000 on Naira, whatever the case may be. Um, in this case, it's a simple logical expression where we could say, where salary is greater than 10,000. Now, first thing we observe is that the where clause comes immediately after the from clause and specifies a condition. So take note, where, then the condition. So in this case, the condition is salary greater than $10,000. So we run the SQL statement and here we have only those who earn more than ten thousand dollars so here we go all right here we go so um if you do not want to see all the columns you could pick specific columns example last underscore name and then their salary maybe that's all you want to look at and let's say their job underscore id hence the job id column right and so we run this code and then here we go so notice that the where clause does not affect the column selected. Column selection has to be also be done independently. Okay, but this will now filter out or restrict the rules selected based on this condition. Before we go into look at some more complex conditions, let, let's look at some other comparison operators we have. Um, so here we have um, a table. These are there are two operators we're going to be using for doing this, our comparison operators and then our logical operators. First, for comparison operators, usually um, uh, basically compare the value on the right and the value on the left and returns true or false. Typical example here would be our where clause here, where it compares salary to 10,000 returns true if it's true and false if it's false. So only those that return true for this condition, which is less than 10,000, are retrieved. So having said that, um, we have other comparison operators like the great, we've looked at the greater than, we have the greater than or equal to, which retrieve those that are greater and above. Sorry, equal to or greater. This retrieves only data that is greater. This is less than. This is less than or equal to. This is not equal to. Not equal to. That means that the data that is not equal to a particular value. This is also not equal to. So they are basically mutually exclusive. You could, you, you could, you could, you could use this for not equal to. You can also use this for not equal to. Then we have the between and for selecting a range of values. One of those whose data is between, let's say, 5,000 and 9,000 specify a range. N is used for specifying a set, a set of values that must be true. Don't worry, 
when we do the demonstration practically you will understand how the in operator works but these are our comparison operators we have the like operator which searches based on a pattern for example if you look at the search engine on most pages like facebook they are wildcard searches so like is used for making wildcard search what does a wildcard search mean wildcard search means a search that is based on a pattern for example um, names that start with A or names that contain A, B, those are patterns. So you can also search based on a pattern. Now, first of all, we cannot um, use these operators for null value. Null value means value that is empty or unassigned. So we have two more operators, is null and is not null, used for checking where a particular value is empty. All right? We'll still go through all this practically one by one now. So next, next is logical operators. Now logical operator, we have the AND, we have the OR. This is used when you have want to compare multiple conditions. I'll give you an example. Let's say your boss has just asked you to retrieve from the company database every staff who earns less than $15,000 and they are not IT programmers and they also um, do not earn a commission. Those are multiple conditions. So the AND will handle that. So the AND and the OR are used for evaluating more than one condition. All right, let's call the cheese. Let's practically look at these conditions. Um, so let's say we'll just pick our examples now and just take them one by one. So I'm going to write a second query here. Let's say we want to select a staff whose last name is Abel. Now that's one staff. So we'll select last underscore name. So the data, the fields or columns of data I want to see about him will be his last name, his salary, his job underscore ID. I also want to know if he earns a commission. So the commission underscore PCT column, okay, from employees. Okay, now the where clause will be where last underscore name is equal to in quote, remember, characters in SQL are quoted. Character in SQL are quoted, numbers are not. And this search is case sensitive unless you specify, okay? So I run this code, run current statement, and then we have Abel, this is record. So Abel earns 0 0.3, and his commission percentage is 0 0.3, his job ID is an IT programmer, Salary is 11,000 and his last name is Abel. So we just searched for just Abel. Now, if there were multiple people with last name as Abel, they will be retrieved. But we have only one person called Abel. Example of a name with mul multiple values is example King. We have two Kings in our database. Let me select their first name so we can see a difference. So first underscore name. So here I'm selecting the first name last name column, salary column, job ID and commission percentage column. For the employee whose last name, that is surname, is King. So when I run this code, you notice we have two Kings, but they are two different people. Janet King and Stephen King. Okay, Janet King is a sales representative, therefore SA underscore rep. Um, Stephen King is the administrative president, AD Press, and he does not earn a commission while Janet earns 0.35%. Alright, um, so we take this a notch up. Let's now look at, so you notice we can search with characters, we can also search with numbers. Now let's look at the between and operator, like we looked at in the slide. So let's I want to get those who end within a range. So I will say where salary between between what three thousand and what and let's say eleven thousand. So here we are retrieving all those who their salaries between three thousand and eleven thousand. Please, an important note about the between and operator: the lower limit always comes first. So here you get the same data, the same data fields. But only those who their salaries are between three thousand and eleven thousand. Okay, that's the between an operator as we looked at in the slide. So let's see what we get. I run this. 
So notice every salary here falls in that category between 3,000 and 11,000. If you want to reduce the set, it's okay. Let's just see the range between 3,000 and 5,000, then it can be reduced also. Right? So the range now is 3,000 and 5,000 will be retrieved. So run properly, run. All right. So here we have those who end between 3,000 and 5,000. So go ahead and run this in your own SQL environment and observe the results. Um, that's for between and now let's talk about something we call the in operator and of course we also looked at it in our slide now the in operator selects with a set by specifying a set okay so how is it how is it used I can say I can say where salary in open and close now what, do, what does this do it selects data that fits a particular set so let me supply the set so I'm looking for where salary is either 4,000 or 10 thousand or twenty four thousand or eleven thousand now this one is not greater or lesser it's searching for this particular field in the salary code you get it all right so i repeat where salary in that means salary has to be in this particular set so this is we're searching for salary where salary is either four thousand or ten thousand or twenty four thousand of 11,000. So, that's for specific salary fields. All right. When we run this, you notice we get just salaries. 24,000 is part of the set, so it's retrieved. 11,000 part of the set, retrieved. 10,000 part of the set is retrieved. 4,000 part of the set is retrieved. Okay. So, that's basically it for the in operator. So, it can also be used for character coding. So, example, I might want to say where last underscore name. So, let's I'm looking for two people. I'm looking for King and Abel or Abel and Nina or Abel and John, depending. So I want Abel one comma Nina. That is if there is a data field called Nina in the database. I also want Bloom and I and I want um let's say Talker. So I want just this particular people. If I run this code, I have Abel, Bloom, and Talker. There is no last name called Nina in the database. It does not affect the query. It retrieves this particular people. Okay. Now I might also say, oh, I want to see all their records instead of just their first name, last name, salary, job ID, commission. Now because it's, it's just columns, you can just come here and say, give me all their columns. Asterisk. So you see, the where clause only affects rows retrieved. Rows are these horizontal records. That is each person. Okay. Column is just which field of their data do you want to see, right? So let's see what happens now. We run this. So you notice we have all their records now instead of just their um, last name, first name, job ID, and so on. So have all their records complete. Manager ID, department ID, salary, job ID, hired it, phone number, and so on and so forth. All right, we take this again one more step up. The next operator we are going to look at is going to be the like operator now. We've talked about between and in, we've talked about these ones. Do you remember what I said? The not equal to, this, these two are called not equal to, okay? They are mutually exclusive. This can be used as not equal to. This can also be used as not equal to. So let's look at a like operator. A like operator is for, I mentioned it, a wildcard search. Even if you don't know the meaning of the word wildcard, it's a search based on a pattern. I'll give an example. We have two main wildcard searches, two main wildcard characters in Oracle. But the main one we're going to be using today is the percentage sign. The percentage sign, okay? For example, let's say you want to view all those who their last name starts with an A. For example, last name starts with an A. So it's going to be where last name was the operator. Like, how does it work? You put a quotation mark, you put an A, and then with an percentage sign. Okay, now let's pay attention to this. So what's going on here is that it's going to retrieve A. This percentage sign simply means zero value, one value, or more values. Even if you don't understand that logic, just understand that an A with the percentage sign would say 
give me everyone with their last name starts with an A. Okay? It could be first name, it could be job ID, but once the character column hence is quoted, you will retrieve all those with their last name starts with this character. So we run the code, and what do we get? So notice our last name that started with an A, Abel, and the at consent Austin. So these are the two we just retrieved. Later on, we'll do with the last name starts with an E. So I put an E here, and then I can run current statement. And notice where his last name starts with an E. So, and so on and so forth, we can try with Z. So, only one person has a last, last name that starts with Z. It's not key. It's not key. All right. Um, now, let me try something. Now, what if we ask for those who their last name starts with a Z, but it's in small letter? Remember, I told you SQL is not case sensitive, but the data stored in the database has to be searched for the way it is stored. Of course, unless you specify using upper or lower case function. Yes, that's a story for another day. Okay, so when I say Z like this, and I run this code, notice the query is not wrong, hence it's not an error missing, but nobody was selected because nobody's last name starts with a lowercase z. Got it? Okay, so that's how the like operator works, such based on the pattern. What if I want to know those who their last name contains a z? Or let's start with contains an a. It would be a percentage sign with an a, then another percentage sign. What does this mean? This will represent zero, one, or more characters. This will represent zero, one, or more characters. That's what percentage does in the like operator. Then in between is an A. That means contains. So in between is contains. And if the percentage sign is at the end, it means starts with. If it's at the beginning, it means ends with. So let's see what we get here now. All those with their last name starts contains, not starts with or ends with contains. So notice all these guys, their last name contains an A. It's a condition they all completely meet. All right, now we get to our logical operators now, which is this part, our logical operators. Remember what I said? I said it's used for, oh, 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 before we go there, let's talk about the is null and is not null. Yeah, before we get to the logical operators. Good. All right, um, so, the, so null has a special way it is searched for. Right, so I have a column here, commission PC to where a lot of the fields are null, but some are not null. Null means int. Please, null is not zero. Null means data that is unavailable, unavailable data or inapplicable data or data that does not exist. A null value is usually used to depict that. So we are going to see how to search when it comes to null values. Please, our comparison operators like greater than, like greater than, less than, and so on are not designed to make searches over null values because greater than means a number is expected. So let's see how we can now search for those who earn a commission or those who do not earn a commission. So let me say let me say I'm selecting their first names. My boss requires their first name, requires their last names, their salary, and he wants to know whether they earn a commission or not. So we have commission underscore pc to that column so first of all let's see the records first from employees oh from employees not employees sorry so we do this again all right so these are all our staff their first names last and salary and their commission status those that do not in a commission have a null commission status hence no those that do any commission, they have values here. Yeah. So let's search for all those who their commission PCT is null. So the where clause would look like this. I told you nulls have special search consideration. So I would say where commission underscore PCT. You can't say it's equal to it's null equal. Just say is null. So take note. I want to see all those who their commission PCT is null. I run this, so these are those with an empty commission PC. You see that? So all those with privates. So we are, fil we are filtering out those, only those whose commission PCT is null. Or whose commission PCT is not null. I'm looking for those with a commission PCT is not empty. So 
So here we go. So we notice we get this with the function. So this can be, this can be very useful in an in an office environment where there are a lot of records to sort, or even an application social media platforms that retrieve hundreds and sometimes millions of records. Uh, filtering becomes a very important part of restricting and giving a clearer understanding of the data. This is also a very crucial part of data analysis. All right, so um, let's now look at our logical operators finally. All right, so these are our logical operators and and or before we call it a day. Now, our logical operators, I've, I repeat, it helps us evaluate using more than one condition. One thing all this query here has in common is that they use just one condition. Where salary is greater than 10,000, that's just one condition. Where commission PCT is not null, that's also one condition. Now, you may want to say, how about I see all those who earn more than 10,000 and they're also IT programmers? Okay, whatever the figure is. Let's say, let's say those who earn more than 5,000, but they are also IT programmers. So it will be where salary greater than 5,000 and, so and we join two conditions, and job underscore ID is. So we're retrieving all those who salary is greater than 5,000. And their job ID is IT programmer. So IT pro, IT pro, pro and that's how we see the database. All right, we run this, and here we go. So these are all those. These are not all our IT programmers. It's those who their job ID is IT programming. That's one condition, and they also earn more than five thousand. So there was someone who was an IT programmer but does not earn more than five thousand. Then the condition is not met. Now, the OR operator, that's the second one. Now, what if we, we want an OR? An OR operator. OR. What, what difference has it made on this query here? Your guess is pretty much as good as mine. This would mean all those who earn who their slide is greater than 5,000, or, or their job ID is IT Pro. Right? So the OR means you are either meeting this condition or this condition while if it was and it means you meet both conditions which is pretty much how it works in the natural english language all right let's select this let's see what happens so you see so even if you are not an it programmer if you met the other condition of any more than five thousand you are still improved so that's for all and not one more thing will be what what of sometimes you might want to search for something that is not really part of our column. For example, I want to start based on annual salary, right? Let's say we can, we have, um, we already have our employees records. <coughs> okay, I want their annual salary, which is salary multiplied by 12. Let's alias it to annual salary, right? If I run this code, so this is everybody's last name, their salary, that's their monthly salary, their job ID, and then the word they earn annually. Okay. Now, what if someone wants to search for all those who earn more than, let's say, for example, hundred and fifty thousand dollars annually? So now we are searching based on a, an expression, not a calling now. So we will, the search would look like this. I will say where salary multiplied by 12 is greater than 10,000. Sorry, I will say 150,000, not 10,000. Honestly, it should be much higher. So all those who their annual pay is greater than $150,000 are going to be retrieved now. So I'm certain the idea here is that we are searching with an expression, not just last name or salary or job ID is equal to this or this or that. And so on. We are not. We, you can also write an expression. It doesn't matter how complex. Once it's arithmetically correct and can return a value, it can compare it with this value. So it's checking everybody's annual salary and verifying and retrieving only those who their annual pay is greater than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So let's run this. So this is it. So these are the only people their annual salary is greater than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's um. 
restricting and filtering data using the wear clause. So the wear clause is the clause for doing this. So a recap of everything we looked at today. Uh, we talked about, we first of all introduced restricting and filtering data. And we talked about how it's an integral part of um, search engines. It's a core part of data analysis too, where you have to retrieve data based on rules you require, based on required rules, not the entire record. Okay? So we talked about all the comparison operators. We looked at the greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. We talked about how these two operators, this and this, do basically the same thing. They are all not equal to. Okay, we have between and that selects for a range of value, like ranging from 2,000 to 5,000. We have in that selects based on a set. It specifies a set in a parenthesis or in a bracket, and then it retrieves just data that matches the fields being compared in that set. We have the like operator that retrieves based on a pattern. Okay, that would be the percentage sign. That's where we use the percentage sign to retrieve just data that either starts with a character contains a particular character or ends with or starts with a particular character. So that's the like operator. Don't forget, the like operator I mentioned, if I have percentage and an A here, it means ends with A. If A is here and this is here, it means starts with A. Right? My A is a bit one kind, but bear with me. <laughs> I'm writing with the mouse, that's why. But, but if we have the percentage here, and the A in between, it would mean contains. So take note, this would be ends with, ends, A ends the, the logic, starts with, A starts the logic, contains A. A can be multiple characters, it can be, it can be a word also. All right, then we looked at the null value who is given special consideration, which is, is null and it's not null. Then we also talked about the AND and the OR operator for comparing multiple conditions. AND means both conditions have to be true. OR means just one of the conditions can be true before the data is retrieved. Um, so that's it. Um, call up your environment and you can try this on any other record. It must not be staff records. It could be products, a product table. It could be a client table. It could be a record of sales and so on and so forth. So that's how your um, real clause works. It's an integral part of building search engines. Please do have a, have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll see you in another tutorial. Thanks.